Hi, good evening, everyone. We're going to be talking about the nuts and bolts of telemedicine tonight. Um, these presentations that we're going to be having were shared with us from Family Voices National as part of, as part of a um, bigger grant from the um, Health Resources and Services Administration as part of a, an award totaling a um, million dollars with 0% finance. Anyway, um, the contents are those of the authors and do not necessarily re represent the official views of the endorsement by HRSA or um, the United States federal government. So um, in, in the age where the average consumer manages nearly all aspects of life online, it's really a no brainer that healthcare should be just as inconvenient accessible and safe as online banking. And that's a quote that comes from Jonathan Linkus. Um, and I think what we have found out through COVID is if there was one kind of a nice thing that happened is, is that um, telehealth has become really quite a, quite a popular um, way to access uh, health services for for families and for those that um, have families that have a disability or chronic health illness. So what we're gonna talk about tonight, cause this is part one of part of two parts is we're gonna talk about tele what, um, the fab four, what does being connected mean? Um, we're gonna talk about data. We're gonna talk about cellular, broadband, internet, alter alternative connections, testing connections and enhancing connections this evening. So um, our objective really is to determine if you're connected for a telemedicine point, uh, appointment. Um, and we're going to identify two options for getting connected if you're not. And we're going to demonstrate one way to test connection and one way to improve connection if you are connected. So tell a what, did you what? So telemedicine is often interchangeable with telehealth, but it technically it's focused on the aspect of care, such as a video appointment with your child's pediatrician or a virtual therapy session, which your young adults might be your young adult speech therapist. I don't know how many of you have used um, tele, telemedicine yet, um, but maybe that's coming. So then telehealth, the difference between the two is the use of the electronic information and telecommunications to support long distance clinical health care, professional health related education, public health and health administration. Technologies for this really include video conferencing, the internet, store and forward imaging, streaming media, terrestrial and wireless communication. So then we're gonna also talk about digital and connected health. Um, digital connected health is the use of digital, mobile, wearable, or other innovative technologies that facilitate the tracking and monitoring of health status and behavior outside the clinical encounter with the goal of fostering more patient-centered, technology-enabled, and insight-driven healthcare. So the fab four of a family-centered telemedicine appointment really are well, number one, are you connected? Two, do you have a device? Three, can you see your provider? And four, your family's first telemedicine appointment. Those are the four things that we're gonna talk about. So in part two, we're gonna talk about, can you see your provider? And um, if it's your, your fam, we're gonna talk about preparing for your family's first telemedicine appointment. Tonight, we're gonna to talk about the, are you connected and do you have, to have a device piece? So what does it really mean to be connected? So being connected is the ability to send and receive data through space. You like those little diagrams there? <laughs> so what is data and how much do I send through space? So data could be your voice on a phone call, a text message, sending an email, posting a photo on social media, a video telemedicine call. And then how is that data measured? It's measured by a bit with a little b is a small unit of data used to measure speed. The byte with a big b is made of eight bits. 
What are MBPS? Shopping around for internet, you've probably noticed that plan speeds are measured in MBPS. But what are MBPS and how many do you need? MBPS stands for megabits per second. A bit is a tiny piece of data and a megabit is many, many tiny pieces of data, not to be confused with megabytes. Megabits are what is used to measure your download speed. The higher the number of megabits, the faster your internet will be. So, how many megabits per second do you need? Checking emails and browsing the internet usually uses only a small amount of data. A little more data is needed for apps like FaceTime or Skype. If you stream TV shows, download big movie files, or watch live sports, you'll be using a whole lot more data. And if everyone in the house is internet streaming, gaming, and everything in between, you're going to need more megabits per second to keep everyone connected at the same time. So, how much? Well, that depends on you. Our experienced NBN50 plan is great for families and households with two or more people streaming movies, music, video, gaming, and heavy downloads at the same time. To see more and get the best value plan for you, head to the broadband plans area of the Origin website. That was a, just a short little video on megabits, and I thought that was really informative. So here's a little bit of a flow chart on am I connected or not. So you can see from the diagram, um, if you're greater than 15 megabits, um, you've probably got some fast speed internet. And if you're less than 15 meg megabits, you're probably too slow. So um, some of the questions that it does ask is, do I have a cell phone, yes or no? Do I have cellular service? Do I have an internet at home? And you can follow that diagram to, um, figure out what, what your scenario is in your household. One thing that we're um, really concerned about are some family stories. Um, the um, Family Voices National Office, the Navajo Nation is in also in part of New Mexico. So um, some of the families that live in the Navajo Nation are not connected to the internet or cellular signals. And during the pandemic, 40 families were identified by a local school as needing connection, but only 10 were in locations capable to receive it. Um, the location and lack of towers um, and location out of provider area were some of the reasons that made the service unavailable to those that identified with a need. And I know that we have many families across the state that also um, may not have um, a connection to be able to do um, telehealth. So that's something that, that we're very concerned, concerned about at Family Voices of North Dakota is making sure that families have that um, accessibility to connect for telehealth. So there's two types of connections. There's a cellular connection and then there's the internet and broadband. So the cellular connection could be things like your phone, um, Here's a little video. In its most basic form, a mobile phone is like a walkie-talkie, using radio technology to transmit and receive a signal. But unlike a walkie-talkie, phones don't connect directly with each other. If they did, there wouldn't be enough frequencies available and the signals would clash. So a mobile phone network is comprised of a series of cells with a receiving mask in each, hence the American term cell phones. When you speak into a mobile phone, a microphone turns your voice into an electric signal. This signal is turned into radio waves by a transmitter, which beams those waves to the nearest mast. The mast receives the signal and sends it on through the network's infrastructure until it reaches the mast nearest the person you're calling. From there, it's a short transmission to your friend's phone. In this fashion, the whole range of radio frequencies is available in each cell, meaning that multiple people can use the same frequency in many cells. But the frequencies are finite. If you have a large number of people using their phones all at once in a single cell, the network in that cell can become blocked. That's why it's very difficult to make a call at midnight on New Year's Eve. Here's a little video. 
I love the little videos that have come along with, with this um, presentation. There was several things that I didn't know, so I'm hoping that you all will be able to learn something from this too. So data really is a small piece of information that is sent through wires or space. A data plan is a service that's offered by a mobile carrier. It might be AT&T, it might be Verizon, that allows, in our area, that allows users to access 4G and 5G networks and charges per amount of data that's sent and received. Cellular words to know. So you need to um, know uh, minutes as pay as you go service for a specific amount of time. Um, a 4G is the current standard of most cellular networks. 5G is very new technology that just came out in 2020. And then um, the internet and broadband. So what is broadband? Where's my little video? Here it is. Mounted on your roof. 
mobile or cellular wireless usually refers to cellular phones or other handheld devices that are by definition well mobile and can travel easily from place to place. Broadband is about connecting businesses to customers down the street and around the world. Broadband is about connecting doctors to patients, helping to drive down costs and improve access to health care. Broadband is about connecting teachers and students to the latest information to expand learning and assist in quality education, no matter where they live. Broadband is about emergency responders receiving instant information and providing a new way for the public to call for help in the future. And broadband is about connecting families, whether it's across the country or across the world. So a modem is a device that enables a computer to send and receive information over a normal telephone line. I'm sure if all of you have the internet, you have some sort of modem in your home. Um, I've had to replace our modem a couple of times, but through our carrier, it's been a pretty good um, process. There's also, do you remember dial up? I mean, that's been a few years, but it's a connection from your computer that goes through a regular telephone line to connect you to the internet. I remember in the early days of dial-up how slow that was. Um, and now that we have um, broadband, how much quicker things are. You might need a hotspot, which is a place where a wireless internet connection is available, like a coffee shop. You might need Wi-Fi. Uh, Wi-Fi connects computers to cell phones, laptops, and other devices to the internet through um, a cable that's wireless. So sometimes when you go to a motel or the library or um, those kind of things. So what happens if you're not connected? Some options for getting connected in your community might be a community center, fast food restaurants, um, a liaison hub, a library, a gathering place like a chapter house or a general store, a coffee shop. Um, if you want to use our wire or connection here at the Family Voices Office or other community providers, you're sure welcome to. Um, and then uh, Lifeline and schools are also a good source for getting connected in the community. So testing your connection, how fast can you download and upload data? You want to um, make sure that you are establish your connection, whether you're on cellular or internet. Open your web browser to Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or um, whatever web browser that is your favorite. And then type in this, the website fast.com and you should be able to tell how um, fast your internet is. Um, so here's another flow chart on um, are you connected? Again, you want to make sure that you're um, in that area of, of greater than 15 and, le and um, again, less than 15 might be too slow. So enhancing your con connection to um, get a strong signal for a nice telemedicine experience. Um, wired, having your computer connected with a wire to the internet connection will give you a stronger signal than if you're wireless versus wireless, um, which is a wireless signal that has to travel through space so it can sometimes be weaker than connecting with a wire. Uh, windows, standing by a window when using cellular can get you a stronger signal and more bars. I've had to do that several times. Or walls, the walls can provide a barrier to cellular and Wi-Fi signal. So your signal might be weaker if you um, have your office, let's say, in, in the basement. So from Ferris Bueller, life moves pretty fast if you don't stop and look around once in a while you could miss it. You know, for a very long time, I didn't know about megabytes or megapixels or mega, you know, any of that. I didn't pay attention to it. I, and it just didn't seem like it was that 
big of a deal, but the more technology has advanced, um, I have come to um, realize how important some of those things are. So the next part of this is, do you have a device? Um, and we'll talk about that. The computer is not a device anymore. It's an extension of your mind and your gateway to other people. So um, we're gonna talk about, again, the tele-what, the Fab Four hardware and software. What is a device? Tele-ready devices, camera, microphones, earbuds, alternative sources for devices and testing devices. So by the end of this little session, um, you'll determine if you are tele-ready with a camera and a microphone for a televisit. Uh, if you could, if you do not have a tele-ready device, we'll do, um, identify a couple options for obtaining a tele-ready device. If you do have a tele-ready device, demonstrate one way to test the device prior to your telemedicine appointment. I, I don't know if any of you have had a telemedicine visit. I, I did in the early days of COVID and I loved it. I, I really did like it a lot. It um, saved me from having to drive to go to the physician's office, being exposed in those early, early days of the virus. So I, I really enjoyed it. So I really hope that um, telemedicine, wow, what happened there, um, takes off. So again, um, we talked about this earlier, the difference between telehealth and telemedicine. So we won't um, do that again. And um, digital and, connect, and connected health is really that use of digital mobile or wearable or other innovative technologies, which we talked about earlier. So two terms that you should know is um, the difference between hardware and software. A device is really can refer to any electronic device, including a laptop, ta tablet, and smartphone. There are many new apps out there that you can um, keep your, your um, medical records on, um, all kinds of great information that you can keep on there and share. So a device might be a Chromebook, a desktop computer, a smartphone, an iPad, a tablet, an iPhone, an Android, Kindle Fire, any of those will, um, will help you to, to have a, a great uh, telemedicine visit or telehealth visit. I, when, I did my, um, when I did my telehealth visit, or um, I just used my iPhone, which was, it was, worked great. So some of the categories of devices are computers, tablets, or smartphones. So a computer really is the electronic device that manip manipulates information or data. You can use your computer to type documents, send email, play games, browse the web, and you can also use it for a telemedicine appointment. So there's a, an example of a, a desktop. Here's a, an example of the laptop. Of course, you know, a Chromebook. So some computer words to know are, again, a desktop is a computer that is not necessary, that is not easily moved and it's primarily used at a desk. And that's what I have in my office. Although I do have a laptop as well. A laptop is really portable that you can take with you anywhere. A Chromebook is a laptop that runs Google Chrome operating system. A Mac or Apple is a computer that's um, made by Apple. A PC is really what stands for a personal computer. PCs are used for daily work or personal use. The parts of a PC include a system unit, a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. The keyboard is composed of buttons that create letters, numbers, and symbols, as well as other functions. And the mouse is a hardware device that's connected to a computer and used to move the cursor on the screen. The arrow like that, of course, you know that. And then the monitor is where um, you can look at the display. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about tablets. You might have a Samsung Galaxy. A, a tablet is a portable computer that uses a touch screen as its primary input device. It could be an Amazon Fire. It could be an iPad. 
It could be a Surface Pro. And then what is a tablet? And there's connections there too. If you, um, I will send out the um, slides for this presentation uh, for those that are, would like to have the slides. So the words of a tablet that you need to know is it's a small portable touchscreen computer. Um, so you can it, you use your finger and not a mouse, or you can use a stylus. And the stylus is a pen, which um, is a shaped instrument to help move things around on the touchscreen devices. And then um, we're going to talk a little bit about smartphones. So um, that's another device that, like I said, when I did my um, telemedicine visit, um, I used, um, I have an iPhone and that is what I used for um, my visit. Or you can use a Galaxy, a Nokia, a San, or any type of Android. So there's a kind of some pictures of um, the Androids and the, it's not a whole big difference. And here's a little video on what is a smart, or maybe it's not, okay. So the smartphone is a mobile phone that performs as many functions as a computer. The cell phone is a phone with access to a cell tower and makes calls, but this doesn't necessarily have video capabilities. And I'm thinking about, um, my husband was very, very, um, fond of his flip phone. Um, it re really took some talking to um, get him moved to a different device. So let's talk a little bit about how a device can help a family. So um, in palliative care, tele um, a telehealth toolkit. So when the pandemic hit and the types of visits for their son changed overnight, and I think that happened for a lot of our families, the family received a telemedicine kit the kit included a tablet, a hotspot, some connector cables, and some instructions. The kit allowed the family to use, um, connect to the providers for telemedicine appointments. The device also uh, allowed them to connect to the electronic health records. And it was very helpful to have a device for our family and home health to use just for communications and telemedicine with providers. And I think I would um, verify that too with my, with my visit. So if there are some of you that don't have a device, um, we do have a small little portion of money that we can um, loan out to you um, to help with your, um, with your, to prepare you and um, assist you with your visit. So really what is a tele-ready device? It could be a computer, tablet, smartphone, um, that works and has power, that's the other thing, make sure that that happens. You also need a microphone, either an internal or external um, microphone with your device, headphones or earbuds um, with a microphone. Most, um, most of the smartphones have those, a camera, an internal camera or an external camera, webcam. So again, we're just gonna review a few of the what some of those might look like. Um, so an internal camera, like for a, a computer, it's it's already in the camera. And right now, what I'm um, recording on is an external camera that's that's attached to my computer. Um, so if you have any, either of those, you, you'll be fine. So also most laptops, computers also come with internal microphones. So like for my, what I'm recording on that has a microphone in it. It isn't an, so it would be considered an external microphone, or if you have headsets with microphones or earbuds that are wired and wireless earbuds. They also have microphones as well. So a little bit more about um, earbuds and headphones. There's a wide variety out there. There's headsets for, headsets are okay for telemedicine. Um, so you can see the difference between the two headsets. Uh, the one has the mic, the microphone there. 
Um, the, the blue set does not. So those wouldn't be appropriate for a telemedicine visit. And you can see um, the difference between the mic buds. So the, um, the one in the white has, um, is okay for a telemedicine because you can see it has a microphone button where the earbuds really do not have that capability. It's just so that you know the difference between the two. So three tele-ready devices you could use for a telemedicine uh, appointment again are computers, tablets, and smartphones. What if you don't have a tele-ready device? Some options might, might be there. Um, some options for getting a device in your community might be um, community-based organizations if you want to have one long-term. Um, the Minot State University might have a loaner program if there is one. Title V um, might have some devices that they would be able to loan. The library, foundations and charities might have some, a medical center hub. And then the Family Voices Office um, has a loan, um, loaner. We have an assistive technology um, in North Dakota that you might be able to um, loan some devices from there. Some, um, and then Medicaid issues issued cell phones. And I don't know if that's happening in North Dakota. I haven't heard that it is. And the school might have um, some options as well. There's also a website that you could check out called www.everyoneon.org that um, might have some options for you as well. But if it's something that you just need as a loaner, um, we might, our office would be able to help assist you with that if you just need it as a loan. So testing your camera, um, if you have one for your, on your computer, um, you can test that at webcammictest.com as you see at the top. And it will, uh, check your webcam right online. Testing your microphone. Um, you can also use the, the webcam mic test.com as well to check your microphone before your visit to make sure that everything is working. And I would say that you would only have to do that once to prepare for your visit. Um, and then testing your camera and mic on your smartphone. Um, same, same address, webcamtest.com. That shows you there, you just press the test button, test my cam. And then it says, um, would webcam test would like to access your camera and you would have to allow that on your smartphone. So is your device tele-ready? So three things to watch, um, your computer, tablet, or smartphone that works and has power. You need a microphone and a camera. Your device is then tele-ready. This quote was, I'll call it a smartphone when I yell, where's my phone? And it yells back down here in the couch cushions. That's kind of cute. So again, um, this has been a real short and quick version of whether you are tele-ready. I know if um, some of you are like me, I had no idea, like I said, the difference between bits and bytes um, at all. So if you want more information, there is a lot of information on the Family Voices National website as well. We'll be putting more on the Family Voices website, but you can um, reach them at www.familyvoices.com. Org. I'm glad that um, you're able to um, follow along with us this evening and hope that, um, that you all will register for the telehealth part two, um, which will talk about um, your visit 
preparing and your visit with your provider. So if you have any questions at all, all you need to do is um, get in touch with us at Family Voices of North Dakota. Our number is 888-522-9654 if you wanna talk about um, a loaner um, device for telehealth um, or anything else that you might be needing that we can help with. And also, um, in addition to our number, our email is fvnd family voices north dakota dot drtel dot net. So I thank everybody for um, giving this a little uh, a view, and and hopefully you'll be prepared for your telehealth and telemedicine visits. So thanks for watching tonight and. Um, like I said, if you have any questions at all, just give us a call at 1-888-522-9654. And on that, we're going to end for the night. Thank you.